Welcome to the Craft to Career Podcast with Elizabeth Chapel, where every week we dive into how you can turn your craft into a successful career. Get ready to have the career you've always dreamed of. Hello, welcome to episode 97 of the Craft to Career Podcast. Yes, it is getting close to the 100th episode. It's three weeks away and I do have some things up my sleeve that I'll be announcing on the 100th episode to celebrate because that's kind of a big milestone and I'm really excited to celebrate that with you listeners. So before we go any further though, I want to read the review from this week. This comes from Joshua of Lifting and Stitching. He says, so glad to have found this podcast. I'm a hobbyist quilter and have listened to several episodes thus far. While I'm not running a business around my crafting experience, this show is helping with turning the wheels or spinning the spools with how I could apply some of the ideas and mechanisms you and your guests are sharing for a lifestyle blog. I'm a vegan weightlifter as well and have built a social profile around my experience within my nutrition, exercise, and craft. Thank you for sharing this show with all of us. So you better believe I went over and looked and this account is so cool. If you have not seen on Instagram at lifting and stitching, definitely do. Um, I'm very intrigued by all of the things that he mentioned there. Nutrition, vegan. I do have an odd fascination like I wish I was, but I'm not quite. Um, Exercise and of course quilting. So thank you so, so much for this review. I'm so excited to have you as a listener on the Craft to Career podcast. And again, if you have not left a review on the podcast, please do. It really means so much to me, to the success of the podcast. And yeah, just go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and leave a review. And this week, I have a follow-up podcast interview with Amy Lawless of Happy Hippie Studio. And Amy was a student in my quilt pattern writing course just this last year. And she was one of the students who I had featured on the podcast. And she's here now to share what she's up to. It's been just a few short months, like just a couple since the course ended. And she, it was so funny. You're going to hear, but when we're chatting, we're about to wrap up and she was like, oh, and by the way, I'm doing this and this. I was like, whoa, how did you just slip that in right at the end? Like, I feel like you weren't about to talk about this and this is huge. So she's got some really cool stuff she's been working on. I am really proud of the work that she's done and her go get it-ness, if that's even how you say that, go get it-ness. Yeah, we're going to go with that. And if you have not seen her account I really love her look and her vibe. She was one of the alumni who came to Houston for the quilt market, so she came over for dinner. So I feel like we actually really know each other. We met. She's just very cool. Um, So I would definitely go take a look at her account. And then, yeah, let's jump in and see what Amy has been up to since we last chatted while she was in the class. So excited to have Amy back on the podcast. So Amy, welcome. We want to hear how you've been, what's new, what's happening. Hey, it's so good to be back. Yeah. So, okay, we had you before. So this is Amy of the Happy Hippie Studio, and she was in my quilt pattern writing course, you know, in the fall, and I had her on to, like, what are your dreams? What do you want to be? So now it's been, I don't know, half a year, six months since the course ended, And I would love to hear a recap of what you've been doing since, you know, the course ended. Uh, So I've been doing quite a few things, some of which were things that I wanted to do and accomplish, and some of which were things that I've just kind of fallen into on accident, and um, I'm still really enjoying them. Uh, So first and foremost, I am writing the heck out of patterns. Um, I've kind of streamlined the process that you taught us and made it super quick and easy. I've got templates set up for everything so I can crank out a pattern in a matter of hours now instead of days or weeks. Um, I'm working on, I still, I'm doing scrappy. I know everybody says right now, like modern and all that is what's in. I can't stand it. 
whatever. I'm not no, going to. No, you do you. I'm not going to apologize I, for that. Yep, good. And actually, I've heard people say scrap. What does it matter? It doesn't matter what's trending or not. Right. So, yeah. Well, I figure even if, like, nobody else in the world likes what I'm doing right now, it'll eventually come back in style, and I'll be an authority in the market on it when it does come back. So, I mean... I mean, one of the reasons I initially was attracted to your brand and your business is because you you have honed in on a look. Like, it... And it doesn't matter what's trendy or not. Like, people are going to be drawn to your look no matter what. And, you, yeah, if you could describe your look. So, for listeners, if you are like, what is this? Go and look at Instagram and go to Happy Hippie Studio and you'll see her photos. But in your own words, how would you describe your your look? So very, um, I finally nailed down words that I feel are authentic and it's, um, bohemian homebody. So it's like mm. the cozy, like Saturday morning, but with super vibrant, bright colors. Um, yes. and the, the vibrant, bright, like that stands out to me is like, Ooh, this is fun. This is very energetic. Yeah. And I've had yeah. people message me and say like, I know your pictures when they come across my Instagram because every single one of them has hot pink in it. I'm like, mm. oh, yeah, okay. That's not even a thing that I do on purpose, but it just it just shows up. Okay, that's like the biggest compliment to have somebody say, I can recognize your photo when it pops up. Like, that means you have arrived. You've done something majorly right. So in and of that, let's just celebrate. That's so big. So, okay, you've been cranking out patterns. How are those being received? How are the sales? How's your success with that? So I'm not, they're not public yet. Um, I'm, I'm launching, mm. like launching, launching. So I've got testers. Um, I'm doing promos with fabric companies and um, other influencer people. I'm putting together kits with um, distributors, fabric distributors. And uh, so the first big one is going to be out on March 14th. And that is a re-release of the one that was my bestseller on Etsy. Um, I took it off of Etsy, rewrote it, and we're putting together kits. I've got 22 testers currently. Only wow, only eight of you. only eight of them are doing this pattern. Um, we're not going you know, okay. all in with everybody. Um, and I'm I took a note from was it Bonnie Christine or sh one one of the ladies um, who uses their testers. And helps them build their business at the same time. Oh, um, Sharon Holland. Yeah. Yes, her. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of selected a group for this pattern to be it. I, obviously, I haven't arrived as an influencer. But for people who want to grow um, and people who kind of share the same attitude um, towards the industry that I do. So yeah. that's going really well. We're having a lot of fun. Um, what else? There was something else about well, that. Well, I did want to ask before we move on how have you teamed up with fabric what does that look like because you mentioned like you're teaming up with I can't remember how oh, you worded it oh but so fabric yeah. shops um are building custom um kits for my quilt patterns and one of the things that that kind of irritates me a little about kits um in the industry as a whole is that they're always like from one line or one designer or you know one company and I'm like no I want Allison Glass, and I want Heather Ross, and I want Heather Bailey, and I want Art Gallery, and I want Ruby Star, all in the same kit because they're beautiful together. And so, um, so far, Mary from Rosie Girl has started. Um, she, I ordered my own kits to make my my mock-ups, and she's putting together kits for the patterns as they release. And uh, it's super exciting. And I mean, people are drawn to it. People are liking it. So I'm I'm hoping it'll be. Um, successful yeah by the way that adds a ton of value to a kit like if you can go and buy my fabric bundle as a kit well you could buy that anywhere but if you're selling a kit that literally you cannot find anywhere else like that the value goes up because you can't find it anywhere else you sure. know so that's very cool we are we're going with curated scrap is the uh it, yeah and it is very aesthetic. scrappy like it is actually truly scrappy like it's coming from all these different lines so i i really love that but you mentioned fabric manufacturer is did i get that right like are you working with i don't know a fabric company um, that yes and no i've got some things that i've sent to art gallery um and i'm not sure yet where they're headed they had some uh, blank spaces in uh, a line that's coming out this spring 
Um, and I, um, it's been kind of slow, like going back and forth with him via email. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, but if it's mm-hmm. not this one, you know, you know how it is in, in an industry. It's kind of like writing books. You know, you keep pitching and eventually it'll get there. Um, and I yeah. also s- started something with another manufacturer. And I kind of want to put you in the hot seat and ask a question. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I okay. like this. <laughs> so given, given the niche that I'm trying to work with or in some spaces create, um, what do you think of ghostwriting? For you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me think about this. So I'm looking at your account here. Let me pull it back up. Um, I feel like if someone wants to be a ghost writer, that that's something you should and could go all in on. I feel like you have become, you've done such a great job branding And you've, I mean, I can see the appeal because you've gotten to a point where you're very comfortable writing patterns really quickly. Um, But it's going to dilute your business. It's going to slow down the progress of Happy Hippie Studio if you're writing patterns for other people. So I guess my main question would be, what are your long-term goals and what are your short-term necessities? So short term, do you need the money? Like, are you doing that because you need the money now? So tell me more. Yeah. Why, why are you interested or thinking about doing it? So it wasn't about short term financial goals so much as, um, establishing rapport within the industry. So like, I don't really have any answers on that. Like if, uh, if writing ghostwriting for this company could give me access to the people who I could eventually go to for, things like surface design or writing content that's not ghost written that would be a- attributed back to my company. But it's not necessarily a company that I'm like, it's not my dream company to work for. They're not really my niche, my aesthetic. I'm like, mm, but it don't could do be. It. See, that's kind of what nope. I was thinking. Yeah, don't do it. For one, it's not your aesthetic and your niche. And the very thing you're wanting to accomplish with this which is as in, in your own words, now I'm putting it in your, your own words and my words, but um, building credibility and opening doors. First of all, you don't want to open a door with this company. That's not who you want to be with in the long run. It's not your aesthetic, but you can accomplish that by writing your own patterns and building your own credibility by being a ghostwriter is very behind closed doors. It's more for people who aren't into marketing, who love to write the patterns, but have no interest in marketing. You're great at this. You don't mind being visible. You don't mind being seen. You like that piece of the pie, which a lot of people don't. So like, I wouldn't shy away from that. I would put all of your energy into creating your product and getting it visible and seen and people being like, oh, she's great because of your work that's visible with your name on it, you know? Right. Okay. That's kind of where I was headed. I was like, hmm. Like, it's tempting, but not knowing really how the behind closed doors things work in the industry just yet. Yeah. I mean, it is valuable to have those relationships, but almost like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other ways. Uh, Who, let's say, so when you said you reached out to Art Gallery, was that like you submitted a fabric line? No, um, I submitted mock-ups for a um, lookbook with a fabric line that they Ah, already had. Ah, okay. I'm okay. I'm brand brand new with surface design. I'm not submitting anything to anyone just yet. Okay. I mean, there's clearly a niche here that I think you could fulfill in that regards down the road. So definitely keep that on the back burner. But um, yeah, so I think for you right now, okay, and tell me if I'm wrong, but your biggest thing is you're wanting to sell quilt patterns, right? Yes. And no, the the long term goal is to design fabric, um, and I do absolutely love writing patterns. It's something I can do just for fun, and I probably always will. Uh, but yeah, the eventual goal is uh, textile design. Okay, so I mean, things that will really help open the door for that is one, writing great patterns; two, building your audience. Like it's really appealing for a fabric company to take someone on who's going to help promote and get sales. So. Um, Yeah, growing your audience and building a name for yourself and creating a brand, which you've already done. Um, So, okay, the big long-term goal that you said is fabric design and why, what's appealing to you about that? I honestly don't know. I just like pretty things and uh, that I feel like 
designing quilt only gets you so far, um, and I want I want to create everything from scratch. Um, so designing my own fabrics for my own quilts. Um, maybe it's a control freak trait. Maybe maybe not. <laughs> like I just I just want to have every piece of it from start to finish come from from my own work. Yeah, yeah, that is very cool. Well, and I will say too, your life is very intriguing. I would love to see on your feed and your stories, your newsletters, a little bit more about you and your personality and the life that you live. It's very unique. Your your history, where you've come from, what your home looks like, the foods that you eat, the education for your kids. It's all very unique, which is a selling point for you. Um, people will be intrigued by that. And then as Right now, you want to really hone in on quilt patterns and building that audience. Eventually, though, I do think you are a great person to create fabrics for all the things in your home because that's very you. You know, it's very authentic to you. Absolutely. That is something that's in the works right now. So we just finished construction a couple days ago on um, a studio so I can have a space to record for YouTube and for Reels um, and a space where I can do really, really, really great photography, um, which is something else that I might do um, for others in the near future. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people are struggling with quilt photography. So we built a space specifically for photography and videography so that all those things can become more visible. Because um, the, the whole hippie lifestyle, farming, back to nature, um, it is definitely who I am and, and what influences my designs. So that's going to be at the forefront um, as soon as we're not living in an entire construction zone. <laughs> Good. Okay. Do you care if I'm spewing out more advice? Because I feel like I could very easily become that annoying person that you're like, oh, Okay. It. So go for it now because like otherwise I'll have to like pay you for coaching calls. So like I'll take free <laughs> advice on, on the public, okay. <laughs> on a public platform. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> so, okay. I heard you say... I might be offering photography because people are struggling with that. So I'm seeing a trend here. I also know that you created um, photo presets. Yes. Because, which is freaking awesome, by the way. Okay. However, what I'm going to say here is don't do these things. Like, you or pick one. So if you're going to do quilt photography, which for you, I wouldn't suggest because your long-term goal is to do the fabric. So I would stick with quilt patterns. But again you're going to dilute, you're going to get spread too thin. You're not going to be known for anything. And even right before we started chatting, I was like, wait, pause. I want to record this conversation. We were chatting about the presets and you were like, I'm having a hard time because most of my customers are in a certain age bracket and they have no interest in these presets. So I need to teach them. You don't want to fight an uphill battle. You want to meet your customers where they're at, or you want to find new customers, you know, so either like go all in with the photo presets and photography and just do that or go all in on one, like just the one thing. So you're going to say no to all these, even though you're qualified and there's a need and it hurts so bad to be like, but, but I can, but it will not bring success in the long term and the things that you really want. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. That, that really makes a lot of sense. So just use my photography okay, and editing skills for my own business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, it's sense. such a compliment when people are like, wait, your photos are so great. Just be like, well, thank you so much. Can you teach me how? I wish I could, but I can't, you know? Um, sure. So, yeah. But okay. So things that are going very, very well for you is your marketing that you are, that you've touched on. Um, so you've got 20 pattern testers, right? Uh, I think 20, 22 last time I looked. Yeah. And this group, you said it's kind of like Sharon Hall and desk. So is it like, how do you communicate with them? Is this a tight knit group where you guys are buddy buddy or what does it look well, like? Well, this is a, it's a trial run that's evolved as, you know, this is the first pattern that I've used um, testers for. So it started off with uh, an email list, and I have a pattern tester call pinned to the top of my Instagram. So as people find my profile, they're like, ooh, I want to be a pattern tester. And then a link in my bio that takes them to my an email list just for pattern testers. And from there, when I need them, I send out an email, pattern tester and call email to all of them. 
and the ones that respond, I add to a Facebook group. And that makes it super okay, easy cool. to communicate with everyone all at once. Um, again, okay. it's brand new, so we're still kind of, well, you know, this and this and that's not really settled yet with it. Um, right. But I've put together we lists just... of, um, like, YouTube courses that I've taken on how to grow your Instagram following. Um, just different things on growing your presence as as a quilter and your social presence because mm -hmm. that'll build their following but also builds my visibility so everybody wins yep yep absolutely so yeah I love that you have these pattern testers um and even if there's people who you really love or you really want them to make your pattern I would just reach out to them privately and they don't need to join your whole group, but you could just say, Hey, could I send you this pattern? Um, just to get more visibility. So the things that I'm really excited about are your pattern testers who are going to be marketing for you and you're going to be sharing, you know, about them as well. So that will be great. So March 14th, you said is yes. the relaunch. Yes. For the untamed okay. quilt. So, and if you would, if you could send me a picture of that, I'd like to put it in the show notes uh, yeah. so that people can go and see a photo of that. Okay. So I'll be watching. I want to see how the launch goes um, and how, you know, don't, please, if you listen to the podcast episode where I talk about how much does a typical quilt pattern designer earn, you know, it's you, what to kind of expect for that first launch. All you want to do is put it out there, do the best you can, and then evaluate, okay, how can I get more eyes on this? How can I build up more anticipation? Um, if anything, like do a quilt along for that or, you know, more, it's not about more patterns. Don't keep pumping out more patterns. It's about putting more energy onto one pattern um, and getting more exposure for it. So I love that you have quilt shops as well, putting together kits. That's going to be huge. And then I'd consider, depending how sales go, like if you sell, I don't know, I'm going to put out a number, let's say 20 patterns in the first week, hugely successful, I would plan a quilt along and know, okay, this is resonating. People are excited about this. Let's, let's bring more attention to this. Okay. That sounds, that sounds really fun. I have no idea how yeah. I'm to quilt along, but <laughs> there's always, um, um, I think Emily Dennis has some education yeah. on that, that is, is she does. next on the agenda. So yeah. That's fun. Um, so since I'm focusing on scrappy patterns now instead of photography and presets and, and, and all the other things, yep. um, that brings me to another question for you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have started the preliminary notes on writing a Scrap Academy course, which will be a low investment, um, probably less than $50 short course. And how many people do I need on my email list? How many followers on Instagram before I launch a low investment course? None. I mean, you could use that to grow your list. The big piece of the pie that like, how do you get people to see it? That's the question. So it's either you're going to be paying for ads, which I wouldn't recommend at this point, or I would a couple of things. One, offer it to a few people and say, Either you could pay them and say, I would love to have you take this and give me some testimonials in exchange I'd pay you. Or you have to be very open and honest about it. This person took the course for free and here's what they had to say about it so that it doesn't look like they were a paying customer. But to get some testimonials and to get feedback, like what questions did you have? Um, what would you like to see more of? What went really well? You, like you want to have some people go through it and kind of test it out for you ahead of time. Um, and then you can have an affiliate program and say, hey, if you liked this, then you can share about it and earn a percentage of however many people sign up. Uh, or just ask people, would you be willing to share about this with your audience? Um, because you need to get it in front of other people besides who's on your email list. Or if you don't have an email list, you have to get it seen by somebody, you know? Okay. So I was thinking of, uh, like, JV launch type situation, but I don't know who to reach out to for things like that. For the for sharing about the course? For courses it? and also for getting promotions for my patterns as I launch them. Obviously, I don't want to depend on the same one fabric shop to, to, to grow mm -hmm. my entire business, I'd like to reach out to other people. So if I yeah. say I'm putting together this pattern 
and I want to make a kit, I'm willing to pay for the kit and have a like, follow, comment giveaway. Who do I reach out to for that? Yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't worry about offering to pay them to put together a kit. So a fabric shop, they're either going to put together a kit because they think, oh, this will sell well, or they're not because they don't think it will sell well, um, or they don't have the fabric in store to, to do it, or they don't have the manpower, whatever. could be a few reasons. Um, but if they like your pattern and they have the fabric, they'll put together a kit, you know? So I would just reach out to fabric shops who carry the fabrics that you like and say, hey, I have this new pattern coming out. Would you be willing to make a kit? I'll share about it with my audience and send people your way to buy it. I'm not selling. I would let them know you're not competing with that traffic. Like I won't be selling any kits. I'm only selling the the pattern and they, it, because, especially because it's so scrappy and it's not pulling from one specific line. I know people will be looking for some kits and I would love to send them your way. So you're kind of like, Hey, people are going to be wanting this thing. I will send people your way to buy it. Um, and that way you want, you, you're right. You want as many different fabric shops doing this as possible and not all necessarily for one pattern. Let's say for this first pattern, you want maybe three fabric shops and then you want three different fabric shops for the next one. You want to keep getting in front of different audiences, seeing, be seen by different people, you know? Sure. That makes sense. And then you were saying you don't know who to reach out to about the course. Do you mean about the creating the course or another aspect? Oh, no. I think building the logistics of building a course are, are, are not hard. Um, there's so many platforms out there that just kind of walk you through the whole thing. ConvertKit yeah. being one of them, if you have email through them, like they walk you through how to build and launch a course. It's fantastic. Um, mm, now, awesome. reaching out to influencers within the industry to say like, oh, I've got this thing and I'm trying to promote it. But a lot of, I don't have anything to offer them at at this point in exchange for helping me promote. Well, okay, let's rewrite that. So you do have something to offer them. So it's just being creative of what is that thing? So my guess is you're thinking, I don't have an audience, but that's not the only thing of value to them. So things that are of value to people who have, a business, anything that's going to save them time or take work off of their plate for them. Um, so, so that's something to think about, but also who to reach out to. So I like to talk about the etiquette of reaching out to people. Um, let's say for example, you are releasing a quilt pattern. I would avoid reaching out to someone else who writes quilt patterns to promote your quilt pattern, because that's like, why well, do the same thing? Why well, I would prefer to promote my quilt pattern, you know? Um, so I like to think of how can I make this a win-win? If I reach out to a fabric store, that's a win-win. I sell the pattern, they sell their fabric, we promote each other, and we both up the sales for each other. Or let's say someone who is um, a pattern tester and they just want to grow their audience. You could send them the pattern and ask for them to make it in exchange, you both are going to post about it. You post about them, they post about you. Um, So finding people who you're not selling the same product, but who you are giving them something that either helps them sell their thing or helps them get exposure. That's the way I like to approach it. But then, yeah, as far as how can you bring value to someone, really saving them time, saving them, time is really the biggest one, like taking work off of their plate. Okay, that makes sense. So what about reaching out to people to promote a brand new course? Yeah, let's think. How would that look? Because you want, well, first of all, anyone who likes making scrappy quilts, if you're offering to give this to them for free in exchange for your feedback, like, let me know what you think about the course, um, they get your free course, you know, they don't have to pay for it. So that's a win-win. You could also reach out to a fabric shop owner who might be selling the fabric that goes along with kits for the course. Ask if they'd want to take the course so they can speak like actually knowing that it's good. They're not just promoting something because they like you, you know, but like they've actually taken the course and they know that it's good. Um, Oh, and they could get an affiliate from that too for their customers. mm Mm-hmm. So that's now a financial, yeah, the financial goal too. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
and yeah, being an affiliate. I mean, letting people know not only will you take this course for free, which other people will have to pay for it, you can then be an affiliate if if you really do like the course and, you know, you can get behind it, then you can earn money by sharing about it. So not only are they saving money, they can earn money. And for a fabric shop owner with several thousands of people on their email list, that's huge. Yeah. And so you're not just like, oh, here, do me a favor. You're like, actually, this can earn you money, you know, like you can actually get an income from this. So I'm going to ask, and you don't, don't feel obligated to answer um, because I know you use affiliate marketing for yours. What is the typical mm -hmm. percentage for um, an affiliate to earn? Oh, I'm glad you asked. This is a great question. And people are always shocked. You want to be more generous than not with your affiliates. So I go by what Russell Brunson has said, which is 40%. Um, and it's a, it, you want it to be a little painful where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm giving away that much. Because um, in Russell Brunson's words, you need the affiliates, they don't need you. So right. while yes, you're being generous and you're paying them 40%, but in marketing terms, like I've done Facebook ads and I still continue to, you're paying for those ads regardless if somebody buys. With an affiliate sale, you are only paying when that sale is guaranteed. So it's a much better bang for your buck. Um, but also you're getting people who actually have taken the thing and like social proof who have said, no, this actually is that great. That's way more powerful marketing. So like you, and especially when you're beginning, but no matter where, no matter where affiliate marketing is, is hugely powerful. Um, so yeah, you need them more than they need you. Okay. That's really great. And I think the cost per acquisition on anything is worth it at a higher percentage. If there are people that are going to be fans right out the door. Right. Does that yeah. make any sense? So like Facebook ads, they click, you pay, but then they might not become long term. Um, cause there's no, yeah. there's not the, the social proof there from somebody that they already trust. Right. Like if it's a cold audience, especially if you're selling something, it's way easier to get clicks on a Facebook ad if it's a free thing. Um, but then it's a free thing, you know, no, so you've got, you're paying for people that are wanting free things, which exactly. is sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you. And this course, that's a really, it actually is totally in line with what you want to do. And it does open itself up to down the road. You could offer a course for different patterns or different kinds of methods or that kind of a thing. Um, and really grow and establish yourself with your niche. So I like that a lot. Yeah. I would, I love teaching. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, all right. You've got the release coming out. Um, dreams of fabric design, which I definitely encourage you to stick with that dream. I do think you have a great little corner of the market that you could design fabric for. So I'm going to encourage that. Um, but yeah, anything else that we should be on the radar about or know about or that you want to pick my brain about? Um, I've got one more and I don't want to jinx it by saying anything too early. Um, a New York times bestselling author who is also a quilter that is not writing her own patterns yet. I wrote a pattern based on one of her books and then found out that she was an author, a quilt, a quilter, excuse me, um, and reached out to her and was like, hey, I wrote a pattern based on your book. Would you like a copy to share with your audience? Um, so again, not going to say who. I don't want to jinx it. It was one of those things that happened on accident. Um, so we'll see Did how far. Did you hear back? Yeah, immediately. She was like, oh my what? gosh, that's amazing. Yes, I want, what? absolutely. Absolutely. And it happened on the so same week. So what's going to happen next? Well, I'm going to write up the pattern and send it to her and hopefully put together. You need to make her a quilt. You a, should make a quilt for but her. But she's a quilter, so she wants to make it. Oh, gotcha. Even yeah, better. I found her through her writing and then was like, oh my God, you're a quilter and you share my aesthetic. This is incredible. Oh my God. Uh, okay. And, well, now I'm dying to know. Okay. I'll be <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> yep. Not jinxing it though. It's going to, it'll be at least fall before that's ready. It's a pretty intense pattern. Um, and then with it being an established author, like there's all the published, you know, publicity things that have to be hoops that have to be gone through. Um, and then the other thing is that I wrote patterns just now for Kristen Belouche who is a children's book author and fabric designer. Mm. And she started her own fabric company. Uh, and we, Mary has, from Rosie Girl, has put together kits. And um, those things will be coming out, um, premiering at QuiltCon this year. 
Really? Well, like, what what will be pr the patterns or the so, fabric? Or? So she wrote she wrote a book. She designed fabric and started her own fabric company. And the fabric is based on the book, or maybe the book's based on the fabric. I'm not sure. So she has markets in uh, it's it's children's books, baby and toddler books. And then I wrote patterns that go with the fabric and the book. So it's cross promoted for new parents and grandparents. Um, and they are not wow. necessarily my niche. Um, it's more of a, mm. a modern aesthetic, uh, but it was a really, really cool collaboration that took a, a lot of people and a lot of working together and uh, learning new things. Um, How did that come about? I feel like you just slipped that in here. That's kind of a big one. How did this happen? I met her at Quilt Market. And I was like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, your book is cute. It's gorgeous. It's adorable. Um, and then, you know, Mary from Rosie Girl, who's putting together quilt kits for me. Um, we were just chatting and we're like, hey, this is kind of cool. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have that book. We got it, you know. Um, nope, I didn't have the book. I had read the book at Quilt Market and I didn't buy one. And I was like, oh, I wanted to get a copy of that for my kids. And then she's like, oh my gosh, we should, you know, do this thing. And uh, I ended up finding the author on her website, emailing her to see, like, what she'd be into. And because she also started her own fabric company, she's at Quilt Market and Quilt Con. And uh, she's like, yeah, totally, write one up. So those, That is so cool. Those, so is she, I'm hoping she'll promote you and your pattern. Well, the, the quilts will be at Quilt Con with kits and with the patterns in them. Um, and they're available, they should be available. Um, if they're not available now, they will be after QuiltCon. So, yeah, that's it's that's just hmm. fun. It's just a lot of fun. That's huge. That's yeah. right. And let's just take a moment to celebrate the wins that you have created. Like, you proactively reached out to this person and created this opportunity for yourself, which is awesome. Like, that's huge. So, so people ask, and there's something that. I just want to throw out there. People ask, like, how do you do this? 100% get over being afraid of being embarrassed. I like, love it. The absolute worst thing that happens is somebody says no. Like, they cannot reach through your computer and light your hair on fire, okay? Just get over yourself and like, just, you, you can't be embarrassed. Like, you just have to be able to, like, get out there and um, sometimes it means taking no for an answer and sometimes it means making an absolute fool of yourself and it's fine. Yep. And it doesn't matter. Like, one thing I've been worried about is like, but what if I burn a bridge with this person in the industry because they have a bad taste in their mouth about me? It's not going to get you down. Like, there are plenty of other people to move forward with. Your success does not hinge on one or two or ten people liking you or not liking you. So, worst case scenario, which probably is not going to happen, they hate you and they think you're tacky or whatever your biggest fear is. You can still have a very successful business, even if they do think that, which they probably won't. So, so you're yeah. telling me that quilty influencers don't get together and trash talk new pattern writers? <laughs> who I, made don't. Fools I don't. I don't know themselves? if people, other people do. <laughs> if there are people out there doing that, I hope they find something better to do with their time. But no, I'm not aware of that happening. And if that does happen, like there's still room for success, even if there's people out there who think you're dumb or whatever your biggest fear is. Let's say that there are 10 or 20 people out there who actually believe your biggest fear about yourself. There's so many other people that you will have success. Like how many people out there, I think, uh, I don't know why this came to mind, Paris Hilton, right? Not my cup of tea. I find her just not my thing. She's hugely popular because she's got her people. Like you can, you want to repulse some people. Um, the more you repulse the group of people, the more you'll attract your people. So. Sure. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I feel yeah. like the your, your biggest fear is being embarrassed by someone who's further along in the industry than you are. Mm -hmm. Like, they're probably further along in the industry because they're doing things besides sitting around thinking about how terrible you are. They're not thinking about anything else except how to serve their customers better and how to grow their business. If right? they sat around worrying about what someone thought about them, they wouldn't be where they are. Absolutely. Like, yeah. It's beautiful. Well, Okay. So what else have we got? What else should we be watching for from you? I think that's it. Right now it's uh, it's going to be some reels coming up of me um, decorating my studio that I just built. Um, so that awesome. should be fun and probably embarrassing um, in a super <laughs> Good, fun way. <laughs> my, sister, my sister helps with that stuff, and that's always a riot and a half. So 
Um, you guys will get to see a whole lot of goofy going on there. Um, and then after awesome. that's ready, um, a lot of quilt patterns and pretty pictures. Very cool. And, of course, that we'll be keeping our eyes out for the scrappy course. Yeah, and, of course. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming back and sharing with us what you've been doing since the course ended. And I'm just really so happy to hear how you've been putting yourself out there and, like, moving forward to try these things. So because of that, you're going to have success, and I'm, I'm really excited for you. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, Taking the course definitely gave me the confidence to um, feel like I had something worth putting out there. You do. You definitely do. And I, I see that in you. So I'm excited to continue to watch you to grow. Thanks so much for being here, Amy. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Amy, thank you so much for being on the podcast. As always, it was a pleasure to chat with you. And my mind is blown with how you have just put yourself out there and awesome opportunities are coming up. We will definitely be keeping our eyes peeled to see what happens and what unfolds. Uh, just so cool, such an inspiration. And, you know, just looking at your Instagram account, I feel all of this energy with these vibrant colors. So thank you for all that you're doing. Please uh, stick with it. Keep us posted. If you aren't following her already, go and take a look at Happy Hippie Studio. And again, Amy, thank you for being here. Next week, we have guest Liza Taylor of Liza Taylor Handmade. And she just went to her very first show, like a craft show. And she was like, whoa, there's this whole world of people out there who did not know about me on Instagram, but are totally my ideal customer. And I was like, oh, come on the podcast. We need to talk about this because I have not done that. I have not gone to a show of any kind and had a booth because I, it's an untapped thing that I just don't know a lot about. So join me next week on the Craft a Career podcast. And Liza Taylor is going to share all about going to a craft show, what she wished she would have done, what she learned. And it will get you thinking. And hopefully you and I can add that to the things that we try in the future with our business. So we'll see you right here next Friday on the Craft a Career podcast. Mm -hmm.